Okay, our next uh, scheduled speaker is uh, Ben Rogers. We're running a little late on our schedule, but uh, unfortunately one of our speakers canceled, which is good for our time, but not for our content, and that's Claiborne Carson, who is the director of the King Papers Project, Martin Luther King Papers Project at um, Stanford University and a supporter of the Martin Luther King Records Act. And um, so we're, uh, we're sad that he's not going to be able to join us, but it gives us a little more time and then we'll end with a video that was sent to us by the last speaker. But Ben Rogers uh, is doing an overview of the JFK materials that are in uh, Pogue Library, Legislative Library, and uh, Ben Rogers is the curator of the Penn Jones Collection. He's director of the W.R. Pogue Legislative Library, a research uh, facility that houses congressional records and personal papers uh, related to political history, mostly here in Texas. Uh, he has been an archivist at Baylor University for 20 years, and uh, the library currently features uh, the exhibits, uh, some of which we may see today, JFK 50, primary election and inauguration, and LBJ, Texan politician president. The library began its JFK assassination research collection in 2004 with the papers of Penn Jones, and there are now papers not only uh, Penn Jones, but also Jack White, John Armstrong, Gary Shaw, uh, John Kellen, Roy Schaefer, Paul Hoke, Mae Brussel, and others. The collection includes extensive magazines, newspapers, and newsletters related to research since 1963. The papers of Penn Jones Jr. form the foundation for a growing collection of JFK materials in the archive provides a depository for personal JFK papers in a private institution. The collection contains over 800 news, newsletters and hundreds of magazines and newspapers, in addition to the Jones papers and all the JFK correspondence that Jack White has been added in the last two years. And most materials are listed online and are open uh, to researchers, and they also have a website, which I'm sure he'll discuss. Sorry. And uh, so he came to let us know about, about the collection. <laughs> And we get a free pen, I think, out of the deal, too. <laughs> My goodness. Best speaker we ever had. <laughs> and here's the books I promised you. Thank you. I have a, a slideshow, and we'll try and go through it as fast as we can and get you back on schedule. And uh, whatever slide shows up is the one I'll talk about. Uh, as John said, this is a private collection and a private institution. What we're trying to do is provide a place for assassination research that can be archived for the future. And we'll just uh, count six and go to the next one. Okay. Uh, this is a, about the collection. As John said, we have um, collection began in 2004. With, uh, Bob Platt was a uh, book dealer in Fort Worth and a teacher at Tarrant County College. He gave us the Penn Jones papers. Uh, these don't come in order, you know we have to spend three years putting them in order. Um, but through Penn Jones papers we contacted uh, Jack White and Gary Shaw and others and we're going to go through some of the collections today. This is the uh, JFK Materials webpage and I've given handed out a copy of that so you can go to that page. The collection is divided into two main parts, media and, and uh, collections. As of 2010 we had 40 newsletter titles, 800 individual issues, 420 magazine articles, uh, 200 videos, hundreds of quick sets. Uh, the newsletters are, I've handed out a copy of all the newsletters uh, list that we have. It's this way online. Um, gives you the volume number, the dates. You click on one of the titles uh, and then a list of the issues we have will pop up. And if you click on one of those titles, it will bring up the first page of that newsletter so you can see what it looked like. Uh, many times if we had volume one, issue one, we'll show that uh, and we'll give you the basis for it. You go to magazines, you click on any year, you can just, uh, select the year at the top if you like. Once you click on a year, it'll pull up uh, pictures of all the issues uh, with the name of the article that's in that magazine. Uh, if you come to our library, all the articles have been photocopied or in notebooks, so we don't have to pull all the magazines for you. We just pull six notebooks and all the articles are right there. Um, other JFK materials, this would be what Jack White called um, girly magazine articles. But uh, we no longer have the magazines, but we have the articles and they've been censored. Um, and uh, But you can get them in notebooks. 
Was it the pornographic pictures or the content? Well, I don't know. <laughs> you'll, you'll see these are some of the articles that appeared. And back in the uh, late 60s and 70s, uh, these magazines would have those JFK-related articles in them. Uh, so we photocopied all of that. In fact, um, uh, John Armstrong gave me another one yesterday from... Um, 1967, an interview with Jim Garrison that I'll be uh, photocopying and adding to that notebook. The um, media, uh, newspapers, many people collect newspapers. Congressman Pogue collected newspapers, Judge Hightower, and these are on the assassination. I give you the name of the newspaper, the title of the article, and the date. And even if you don't come to our library, you can go to your public library and pull up microfilm that would have articles from these uh, type newspapers. Uh, the Paperless Archive, many of you have been to that website. We bought all of their uh, FBI and CIA reports uh, on DVD and they're available in the library. Um, here is a, a small list of things that they have, types of things they have. There are 256, I believe, reports. Uh, and we not only bought the DVDs, we went through and, and copied all of the information about all the DVDs and put them in notebooks. So if the website disappears, we still have the information because websites are not necessarily forever. Don't pay your rent, it disappears. Uh, we also have the papers of Jack White uh, who helped Penn Jones uh, publish continuing inquiry for a couple of years with Gary Shaw. Uh, we have the Penn Jones collection. And I did want to point out that uh, Penn Jones' son, Michael, is here today as our guest. Wave your hand there, Michael. <laughs> and, uh, Michael and his brother, Penn, are still very much involved in donating materials to the library. If you come to Waco today, you'll see the 35-millimeter uh, camera he used to show the Zapruder film to people, and you'll see the uh, uh, camera the Gravex, Graphilex camera he used that makes 4 by 5 negatives and we uh, have those. So the Penn Jones collection uh, is divided into, well, Chris did a good job of reviewing who Penn Jones was so we can run through that rather quickly. Uh, and there is a, a thing in your handout that shows if you're interested in copies of Forgive My Grief to uh, contact me. And the uh, First volume looks like this, and I don't think there are any volumes like this left. Um, but we have two, three, and four. <laughs> Somebody bought one here. Huh? Oh. Mm, how much did they pay for it? Forty-five dollars. That's probably autographed. <laughs> how do we end up here? We just need to click. Okay, we're back on cl clue here. Okay, um, the Penn Jones papers are divided into six sections. You know, they don't come this way. After two or four years, you figure out <laughs> how to divide them. So they're correspondence, government materials, uh, general articles, books, publications, personal, and none of the above, which would also include some RFK materials. Uh, under correspondence, there are over 200 correspondence with people. It tells you the name and the date that he corresponded with them. You'd have to come there to see the actual letters. Uh, government materials then are divided up into CIA materials, FBI materials. Uh, just keep on clicking and we'll keep on talking. Uh, House Select Committee general materials or articles, um, and they're arranged different ways. Books and manuscripts. There are a number of manuscripts people sent to Penn Jones that never got published, and we have uh, cataloged a lot of those. And others are in materials. Uh, this is a general list of some of the manuscripts and some of the names there you'll recognize, and some of the titles. Some were published and some weren't. Uh, these are magazines. All the magazines and newsletters are combined into the earlier uh, list I showed you, and that's a combined list of Jack White, Penn Jones, Gary Shaw, and anyone else who gave us a magazine or newsletter. Um, the media, the cassette tapes, the reel-to-reels, the films, the photographs, the slides, the videos are all there. Now, on the, the cards that are listed there, uh, those 
uh, oh, here are some slides that we had. And we didn't have very many slides, but you'll see some of those are dioramas. You see the man's hand here, so you know that's a little... Uh, <laughs> <laughs> that is not the hand of God. <laughs> Shoot so, <that> guy. <laughs> so these are some of the slides and some of the pictures we have. You'll see uh, Jim right there and some other people you'll recognize. Uh, there are lots of pictures of Penn Jones and pictures of witnesses and uh, we have this card file. This is um, um, Mary Farrell's card file. It, all the cards are typed on the Mary Farrell site, but what we did with the cards we had, and we only had 300, we scanned all the cards so you can see what the actual card looked like. If it was two-sided, we scanned both sides. Mm -hmm. um, so those 300 and something cards are online also. Um, Continuing inquiries is listed under newsletters, but it's also listed here every volume we have the headline you click on one of those you come up with the issue this is volume two number one uh, the Jack White collection um, Jack is lives lives in Fort Worth I visit him several times a year and pick up more materials um, we're currently his material is divided into correspondence cassettes videos and there's a, another one we'll get to called slides at the end there um, I, I've lost track of how much correspondence it was, but it came to us envelopes thrown in the box. And we had to take it out of the envelopes, arrange it, put in alphabetical order, and then we copied all of it. And there's 12 boxes, and uh, Jeff spent all week going through all the boxes of correspondence. There's a title index. All the videos, there are 178 videos. We converted them all to DVD, and we just arbitrarily numbered them one up so we realized when we got through that wasn't the best way to find them so you will see at the top a title index and a keyword index so if you're looking for a video about a certain topic uh, here is the title index uh, and there's a similar one for the keyword index here's a keyword index if you're looking for assassination information center you can see there are three videos uh, about that in Dallas and the cassettes are the same way. Um, well, we don't have a, a keyword index to that, but there are not quite so many. But you can go through those online and see what we have. A number of these have been uh, digitized. I think for Chris, we digitized quite a few of Penn Jones uh, tapes also. Uh, Jack White has three, two posters that we have on our website, the Evolution of Lee Harvey Oswald, and then the uh, Mystery Men of Dealey Plaza poster. Jack White is still very much involved in making websites uh, into 9-11 and some other things and we have a link to all his websites on our website and this is one of his websites. Uh, Computer and Automation is another magazine in the 70s that would uh, print JFK related articles. Uh, you wouldn't normally think to look there but we have the issues from Jack White. We've copied all the articles and put them in a notebook. Um, and Jack White had nothing better to do in the 70s and he cut out newspaper articles and arranged them by 23 subjects in multiple indexes and we have all 23 of those notebooks with all these topics. We also have 1200 slides that we've digitized and these are his slideshows he did back in the day. So uh, we've digitized the 1200 slides in our project next year we'll be putting all of these slides online also. These are just some of the uh, quick selection of some of the slides. The lady who was helping me with the slideshow chose these. Uh, Bob Platt, we'll go through quickly, was the man who led us to the Penn Jones collection. He's uh, a man in Fort Worth who collected buttons was his big thing, but he collected political memorabilia of any type, and we have most of his collection now also. Um, he had a store in the stockyards for 20 years just selling buttons after he retired. And several articles about him and his buttons, and we have all these buttons. Mm -hmm. He also collected JFK materials, so we have those also in notebooks for people to use. Publications, newspapers, reports, uh, political materials related to Kennedy, and that type of thing. We have presidential material from him back to James Monroe. 
uh, Gary Shaw collection. I visited Gary several times and uh, he's an architect, sort of retired, but uh, still working. And Cover Up was his major uh, publication, I believe, which is going to come up here in a minute so you can see what it looks like. There's Cover Up. And one thing we got from Gary that I hadn't gotten from anybody else was the truth letter. So let's look at the truth letter a minute. It's, um, it was printed in Germany back in the 60s, yeah. and it's mimeographed on very poor paper. So I thought it was essential to, to, to scan the entire issue of newspapers, newsletters, and put them online. So every issue we have, every page we have is online. And you remember the mimeograph machine. Probe Magazine was another one that Gary helped us with. I believe all of this has been digitized now and on DVD, but before that we had the volumes that we had online, at least the first page of those. That's volume one, number one, back in 93. John Clean worked with us to donate uh, CDs of his research at um, a Hood College, uh, the Raymond Marcus collection. So we have a, a number of CDs from that collection, and those are all listed online, and all of these are in digital format. John Armstrong's been working with us. Uh, we spent last week uh, digitizing his research notebooks from Harvey and Lee. We finished uh, 46,000 scans last week, um, which was working hard. Uh, we've also, uh, his research notebooks, my car is now full of the rest of his research notebooks. <laughs> We're not through. We did put the uh, videos of his interviews with several people online this, in the past year. Well, one man wrote to me that the parts didn't fit. And if you go to the next slide, I'll tell you why. When you go to, to YouTube, they give you the slides over on the side are not in order. The videos are not in order. If you just click on the next one, it may not actually be part two. But if you go back to our website, they'll be in order there. And if you Click here on YouTube, I discovered. I guess most people know this. You click there, you get the information that's on our other website, the full text. Uh, this is uh, John's research notebooks, and he was very meticulous. If you know him, there are multiple tabs for every notebook. Uh, every notebook has a title, and so all these tabs and the notebooks will be on our website in the next millennium. <laughs> um, but to get to what we have, you have to go to this link, Harvey and Lee Research, Box 1, Notebook 5. And you get a web page that takes you nowhere. Looks like this. And you have to know to, to click on Access This Item. And you get to the PDF of this notebook. And then all of these are sections in that notebook. This particular one takes Lee Harvey Oswald's life from day one in 1920 to 1952. So there's an, another notebook. Uh, Mae Brussels, who was a friend of yours back in California, we went online and bought all of her radio tapes. So they're available on our, uh, listed on our website and on her website. Uh, but we have all the uh, CDs available in our library also. And we retype the list from what's online because what's online is rather colorful and ours is rather plain. Um, so that's how you can get to that. And this is what May's website looks like. And you can buy the broadcast for $60 there. Do you have her index? Uh, the of the tapes, yes. Yeah, great. I have not been able to locate the actual materials in the basement of some lady in California. I know who that is. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, so we'll keep on going here. <laughs> uh, Don Grisham, there are people who give things to the library you've never heard of because we never heard of them. They walk in off the street. Don Grisham walked in. He had all of the hard copies of the Dallas Police Reports. Is that what he has here? Yes. Uh, 16 volumes of Dallas Police Reports, which we photocopied and cataloged. And then he wanted the originals back, which he had rescued out of a dump somewhere in Austin. So that's the type of things people will walk in with us. Um, and, and one of the uh, volumes has photographs of Lee's property and, and that kind of stuff that I found rather interesting. Joan Jasek is a very elderly lady in, Fort Worth, in Waco who 
collected things about Kennedy, but her husband was a personal friend of Father Oscar Huber, who administered the last rites of the church to President Kennedy on December 22nd. And Father Huber wrote a long um, commentary on his visit to the hospital, his administering the last rites, his talking to Mrs. Kennedy. And uh, Frank Jasek was a book binder, and he bound this into an elaborate, very large red leather cover. And this is in our library. The family would like to sell it. Um, well, I haven't found anybody interested in donating it to the library yet. So this is the explanation there, and there are four pages of, of story with that. Uh, Larry Breen is another um, Waco school teacher who came in with all these materials on Kennedy, magazines, newspapers, photographs. Um, so those are in the library also. Ernest Lakovich actually lived in New England somewhere, and in Maine. And he saw on our website, we collected Kennedy materials. So he had all his grandfather's materials. It's not a lot of materials, but it needed to be archived somewhere. So he mailed it to us from Maine, and it's listed on our website, and it's in the library. We didn't know Marguerite, actually. But she published this book, The Aftermath of an Execution, of uh, Harvey's, uh, Lee Harvell's funeral in Fort Worth. So we put all of the, if you click on these, you'll get a full-size page of the uh, photographs in the book. Mary Love Smith, did you know her? She was a lady in California. When the, when the House Select Committee was on the radio, she would push the record button. So she recorded all of the interviews and wrote little notes uh, to Penn Jones about the uh, what she heard on the tapes. And the notes on the assassination we've typed up and they're available. Uh, Paul Hoke uh, contacted us last year and sent us his uh, hard copies of the CDs that are also on Mayor Farrell and other sites, but it was important that a physical paper copy be archived somewhere also besides the tombs of Washington. So he sent those uh, rather heavy boxes to us, and the beginning of those boxes have the available but not published materials from the Warren Commission. Uh, David Lifton discovered that everything was not published in the Warren Commission, there were things they had they didn't publish, and so he tracked those down. And those paper copies are in those boxes also. Uh, Roy Schaefer is in Ohio. He's the, um, other than Joe here, is probably the only JFK researcher who has just sent us out of the blue money. You know? <laughs> he, he also sent us his, uh, his manuscripts on JFK. He had researched unpublished manuscripts. He sent us uh, 150 videotapes he had done off the TV. He sent us his 9-11 tapes, and he also mailed us a machine to copy them from video to DVD, along with the, the money to do it with. Uh, Paranoia stopped producing their magazine last year, so they contacted us because they saw we had this online. Uh, they sent us copies of their all printed issues and a duplicate set of issues that have JFK related articles in it. So we have a complete list of that now and they'll send us their new publication every year. So you may not be familiar with that magazine, but it has a lot of interesting articles in it. And the magazine covers are somewhat interesting. Uh, on our JFK links page, we've arranged them uh, by subject. So you'll see the COPA section there. Um, if you have a link you would like us to put up there, let us know if you have a link that we doesn't work anymore. Let us know if we've listed you and you don't want to be there. Let us know because um, links do disappear. And this is a COPA 2002 link we found somewhere. And I hope is still there. Assassination research link. And then we have a book list. We have a special catalog JFK for all our books. And we tell you there how to go to our catalog in one easy step and pull up every JFK book that we have. There's 450 now, but there are a lot more than that out there. Um, um, John mentioned the JFK exhibit. This is a mosaic, I mean a collage we did of JFK for our exhibit. And then um, this is just drawings of JFK. 
and this is a big panel we have there in the foyer of the library about that and this is another large poster we've produced for that and that speaking very fast is all there is Thank you. and we have handouts I guess we can take some questions so we can get the lights back on and yeah just a sec I believe so. No, I didn't say that. Uh, they were, uh, uh, I think a government office in Austin was throwing them out, and he, instead of throwing them in the dumpster, took them home. When did this happen? I don't know. What difference does that make? Police reports are 63, I believe. They're just, uh, reg I think they're online in other places also. Digitally, yes, sir. It, it appears you've received some you know, audio recordings, this sort of thing, from uh, 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 interested researchers, uh, mm -hmm. people who, and in fact, I have some that I'm concerned about that might deteriorate over a period of time. Are you having to deal with maybe tape that deteriorates is hard to play so you can even digitize it for your, uh, for your collection? Are you you're able to, to deal with that kind of, of issue of old, old material that comes in on tape and media? Well, we try because uh, Baylor has a very uh, modern digital digitization center. And that was what we used to do John Armstrong's papers with last week. They have a machine that will scan 2,400 pages an hour. And that was faster than we could convert the notebooks to digital. To Because we had to take his, he has five-inch notebooks with a 1,000 pages in them that the scanner won't do. So we put them in small notebooks. Um, and But they also do a lot of digitization of early black gospel music. Um, any old media form they're trying to digitize so they can handle that material I think with the, uh, a lot of stuff Chris got was on uh, reel to reel mm -hmm. so we have even in our library we have the equipment for transferring reel to reel cassettes and videos to digital through a through a Mac but our digital center helps us with things that we can't do yeah, the challenge would be just to play it back so yeah. you, once you play it back and you, you're able to digitize it then you're you're in good shape but uh, if you, if you have difficulty playing something back where it's going to squeak as it plays past a uh, record head or whatever. Playback. Yeah, and that with the magnetic tape, that's always a problem. And the older it is, the worse the problem gets. Is there any solution to that? There well, there is sophisticated equipment that will take out the squeak noises. Yeah. And um, they can take a lot of that stuff out and just get to what, what it was about, depending on how, how bad the condition of the tape is. But the, the point of the talk is to let you know that there are places that there is a place that will collect your type research. And um, because in, in 50 years, people will still be researching this, but it will be harder and harder to get to the original materials. So by depositing the original materials, or at least digitizing the original materials, they'll be in one central location because uh, Sixth Floor Museum is probably not the ideal place for some of this. Uh, well, your place you can get in and see it. But that, the Dallas Public Library is not really geared to handle that type of material. There was a question back there, too. Um, and then I'll get... Well, I, too, sir, I, you, your page said uh, that Penn Jones was former captain and Chris has said he was Brigadier General. Which... At uh, when he retired, he was promoted to brigadier general. In active service, he was moving on up. He went through the ranks. And he, he left. He was discharged as a major uh, captain, I believe, in World War II. In Fort Six, he was captain. And he was in the reserve for 20 years, 30. 30 years. So he went up through the ranks as a reserve officer, and then upon retirement, was promoted. Yes, you are. Larry Howard, and I saw his name, I just heard this story about Larry Howard that had a repository here and went on television with Tom Brokaw and walked off the set and um, was dead a few months later. Or he, 
you seem to be the new Larry Hammer. Oh, thank you so much for that compliment. <laughs> <laughs> and, and we wish you well. The kiss of, the kiss of death. Yes. <laughs> yes, sir. You're, you're familiar you with the uh, papers that were found in an old safe in the Dallas DA's office? Mm -hmm. They ended up in the sixth floor. <laughs> Is that where they ended up? Yes, right, Michael? I, don't know. I, don't know. I believe that's where they went. Is there any way that you could get access to copy those? I can. I think I'm going to speak in terms with Gary Mack. Okay. Um, well, good luck. We would, that would be fascinating <laughs> that if the public could see that. Well, they did recently open a new research room in the Sixth Floor Museum. Yeah. And you can go there and ask for these things. I have ask heard. For some of the things. I have heard. But, um, and, they, and I did talk to Gary a number of years ago, and that you could always go there and do research. They just didn't have a special room. And you, I guess you had to know what to look for. So, Thank you. That's all I know about that. Yes, sir. And what has Gary donated for copy and what books has he managed to get to you thus far? Do you mean Gary Shaw? Gary Shaw's contributions. So well, far. mostly it was some uh, newsletters he had that we didn't have. He had a lot of grassy knolls, and it was amazing the grassy knoll gazettes that Penn Jones had and the grassy knolls that Jack White had and the Gary Shaw had. They were all different issues because it went set? on for 20 years. We don't have a complete set. That'd be very hard to come up with. Does someone here have a complete set of Grassy and Old Gazette? Might. You might. Well, the ones we have are listed on the website. I might also. There are a lot of newsletters out there that, that we don't have that I think would be good to archive in one place. That was the Cutler one, right? Mm -hmm. yeah. yeah. No, I'm pretty sure. I already called it Entre New later. Yeah, he messed up the title there. Any more, uh, anybody who is interested in coming to Waco today? So by working with the whole library group, we can get things done. Are yes. you a certified librarian by the State Board of Education? Uh, that's only done for elementary, secondary school teachers. I am a, do have a degree in information science among other things. I think I have four, four degrees and something. <laughs> Thank you, Ben. <laughs> I used to think I wanted to go to Maui when I retired. Now I think I want to go to the Pogue Library. <laughs> but it's a great uh, collection and otherwise so many researchers' collections have been lost to history. Uh, Holcomb Heston, who was an investigative reporter who did the truth newsletters and many books on the Kennedy assassination. I got the last of some of his, his Kennedy assassination books because his wife gave him as an example of his writing skills, not the topic, to somebody in New Jersey who then sold them to me. But uh, when he died, this is a guy that tracked the Nazis. He, you know, he wrote about organized crime. He was an investigative reporter. You know, he he, he was he, he wanted to testify to the Warren Commission, and the and the CIA told them that he wasn't reliable. Well, the reason they said he wasn't reliable is that the CIA had the SS Nazi SS files on him as an opponent to Hitler that said he wasn't reliable. And uh, but his, w when he died uh, uh, up in New Jersey, his wife told the realtor to just clean the basement out with all of those investigative files and work. So if we don't actively preserve the things as, as, uh, as he's doing, they are going to be lost to history. And that's, that's part of what I'm interested in the, in the museum. <laughs>